Hello, my name is Rich Lyons. I'm the Chief Innovation and Entrepreneurship Officer here at UC Berkeley, and I was the Dean of the Business School for, for 10 years at the Haas School. And I'm here with my colleagues at Executive Education, Berkeley Executive Education, and, and we thought we'd put together some, some thoughts. We're all addressing this remarkable crisis, this worldwide crisis, COVID-19 and all the fallout from it. It's, it's a remarkable event, no, no question about that. And as we, as leaders, are trying to process this event and also use what we've learned in our past experience, we've all been reflecting deeply. And I thought, well, let's put together some content. I know a number of my colleagues here at Berkeley are doing the same. And I thought, well, what, what three things would I say to, to leaders? I, I, presuming that anybody who's watching this is already a leader, the idea that I'm going to sit here in front of my screen and talk to you about things you haven't thought at all about is kind of silly. But what are some of the the bigger messages that, that I've taken from my experience, and, and I thought I would do that, okay? So there are three, there are three topics, or three, three stories, if you will. Um, these don't span all of leadership by any means, so that's, that's not my intent. This is just three, three points that I hope will be useful to you. Uh, I, I've, I've put the word, or the letter P, at the front of each of these three. So the first one that I wanna talk about is presence, and then I wanna talk about permission, and I want to talk about parables, presence, permission, and parables. Again, just, just as a mnemonic to try and remember uh, these, three, these three Ps. And I'll start with presence. Um, you know, any of us as leaders, if somebody said, what was, what was the hardest moment? So we, we could talk about leading in turbulent times. There's no question this is a turbulent time, but th this is more than a turbulent time. This is like a hundred year flood time. This is, a, this is a, an extreme moment. So how, how do we lead in, in our most extreme moments? So I asked myself that question. What was the most extreme moment for me as a leader? And I'll share the story with you. It was when I was dean, pretty early on in my deanship. And we had a young person in our, was seen on our premises with a firearm at, at the school, at the business school. This person went into the computer center. There were lots of students in the computer center, not surprisingly. Somebody had seen that this person had a firearm. It was a handgun. And the police were called. The police confronted this person. Uh, this person did not do what the police said. And the police, there were plenty of observers. Not one person said the police acted inappropriately. And they shot and killed a young man in our computer center. That's a big deal. That's a big deal for anybody. Um, we learned the next morning that this person was a student at our school, an undergraduate. Now, I think at the large level, the best way to understand what happened as people try and piece it together is, is suicide by police officer. This, this young person could have prevented this from happening. But, but so there's the context. Now, what do you do as the dean? Um, that was a hard, hard moment for all of us. And so this is my, my presence story. I, I asked myself, look, as an individual, I, you, we need to think about what we need. But at the end of the day, we need to think about what do the people of this business school need from me right now? And that's what I was thinking about. What, what do they really need from me right now? And that's this presence idea. I was walking the halls. I was going into people's offices. I was just connecting physically with as many people as I could. And I could see the relief. They wanted to talk. They didn't know how to talk about it. We were all quite upset, not surprisingly. But so, so that presence idea, we often talk about communicating in times of great turbulence or, or in extreme moments. That's, of course, true. But I think uh, presence at the end of the day is so profoundly valued by people because the human connection is there and you can't be present for everybody. But boy, if you spend, you know, hours walking around seeing people, you'll be able to connect with, depending upon the nature of your organization, a lot more people than you otherwise would have. Let me put it that way, given so many of our organizations are geographically dispersed. But um, you, one could even, obviously, in the present era, think about, well, could, could I create a digital presence with some small groups or with some individuals so they can see my face, right? What does presence look like in a, in a geographically distributed world? So that was sort of, that was my most difficult single moment as a leader. What did they lead from me, was the, or need from me, rather, was the question I asked myself. 
and presence was was one of the top answers and i did my best to deliver on that and then i got thankfully a lot of feedback after the fact from people saying that that was helpful so there's number one number two i want to talk about permission i mentioned so i think part of part of being a strong leader uh, in a time of great need, right? A time of great turbulence is giving people the permission to experience their own difficulty, their own psychological challenge. Uh, so let me be more explicit about that. I, I learned this from, actually it was the same event. So when we were speaking to the, this is a back, I'm back on the first story, speaking to the community the next day, we assembled everybody. We wanted to talk, we wanted to be together. And one of the people from our, our health uh, center at the, at the university came and spoke. And, and this is what he said. He said, if you're having trouble focusing, if you're having trouble eating, you know, if you're having trouble getting work done, it's totally normal. It's a totally normal reaction to a horrific event. Give yourself that time. It's okay. Uh, if it's going on for a day or two, it's okay. If you find yourself having trouble to sleeping and your, your life and work are totally disrupted a week from now, you know, come in and see us. We have counselors at the health center. If you want to come sooner than that, that's fine too. But it's okay to feel like your world has been totally rocked because in many ways it has been. That was helpful to me. I've used that, that permission, give people permission to be slammed. That's one way of recognizing the gravity of the moment. And even with phrases like, you know, if you're having trouble sleeping, concentrating, et cetera, right? So I, I learned that from a health professional and now I've started to use that notion of what does it mean to give people permission to be, to be rocked by, by an experience? So, so that was kind of takeaway too. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to pull out some of the most extreme moments of, of, my, own, of my own experience. Um, here's the third of the three pieces of advice or lessons that I would, that I would offer and that, that's we talk about storytelling a lot appropriately because I think great leaders are just so often great storytellers. But I, I want to use the word parable here, not just because it starts with a P, but be, you know, a parable is a short story with a message. With, with uh, doesn't have to be a moral message. It's sometimes a moral message, but with, with a lesson to it. And so here's, here's one of the things. I, I heard this just the other day and I thought, oh, that's a really great point. And the point was this. Somebody said, you know, these are trying times, there's no question about that. They're very difficult human times. They are also times when we learn a lot. So there are stories getting created. There are stories that we are hearing that we are part of. So if you thought about, this is a bit extreme, but if you thought about your leadership capacity as your inventory of parables, how rich is your inventory of parables? And how are you going to develop that inventory, your leadership capacity, as you move through this crisis and as you help your people and organization move through this crisis? That's, that's just a neat lens. Uh, again, I don't take away from the seriousness of what we're all going through. It, it's very serious. But we also have things that we're seeing and, and realizing, wow, that's a very interesting story. I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you just a couple of quick examples. Like, okay, so we're going through this right now. We're right in the middle of it. Uh, hopefully, the middle, moving toward the end, but we don't even know that. But um, what are some of the things I've seen? Here's one. So on the Berkeley campus, this could be true in a lot of campuses, the idea is could we bring some of our life science lab capability to the testing challenge? And we did that. And so the idea is, well, that's a cool idea. A lot of people had that idea very quickly. But going from somebody having the idea to using our lab capacity to do COVID-19 testing and actually doing it, there are a lot of steps between those two things, right? You've got safety concerns. You've got just the engineering of being able, it's one thing to do 50 tests. It's another to do 5,000. This is, the, the, we're sort of not built for, for scaling um, and, and many other kinds of things, right? So, so if you thought about who made that happen, and so again, I mentioned I'm the chief entrepreneurship and innovation officer. The idea is that somebody who was very entrepreneurial needed to pull that off. 
So if we thought, you know, this is part of my parable or, or a parable that speaks to me, it is, wow, if, if everybody on the university campus had been put through sort of entrepreneurial training, all the lean startup and all that perspective, just think how much greater our capacity would be as an organization, as an institution, as a university, to be able to move quickly when we need to, to be able to convert a lab from this into that. Now, we don't have to do that kind of thing all the time, but there are times when we need to do that kind of thing, and we need to do it fast. And we have a lot that we can bring to the table if we can connect all those dots in between. Entrepreneurship and innovation is very much about that. It's not just the idea. It is bringing the idea into practice. That's what defines innovation. And that entrepreneurial capacity in a university is part of what gives it the agility to help bring as much benefit to society as we can. So those are the three big messages. Again, I hope they're helpful. Those three Ps do not span all of leadership by any means. But if we think about what's going on on the present side, are you present when, you, when they need you most? And how do you think about presence in a, in a digital way? If we think about permission to be slammed and what's that doing to people, if, if that's, that's communicating empathy and, and you need to do that as, as truly as you can. And then this idea of parables, that you as a leader and your capacity as a leader is in part defined by the strength of your parables. And this is an opportunity to develop those parables, those lessons, those stories that communicate things to people and help them process their world and make us all stronger going forward. Okay, so thank you for listening. Thank you for being a partner to Berkeley Executive Education. And I hope to see you soon. Bye now. Thank you.